We're so pleased to have Tom Burt here today. Tom is a member of the Pennsylvania House of Representatives, he elected in 2006. He's a dedicated and tireless legislator. He's one of the leading advocates in Pennsylvania for people with disabilities and for their caregivers. He's spoken up for veterans suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder, for, for young children needing help and protection, and especially for people with intellectual disabilities. Representative Merck will chair the Intellectual Disabilities Caucus, which he founded in the 2009-2010 session. Each year that he's, since he's been elected, he's testified before the Appropriations Committee in our behalf. He sought more funding for families who care for adult children with special needs. He's visited numerous group homes facilities across Pennsylvania, and he is here with us today, Tom. Good morning. Good morning. It's great to see everyone today. Make no mistake, your appearance here today is making a difference. I hear you, and more importantly, my colleagues hear you. Let me be clear. Our state is facing serious financial problems. That being said, we should not balance the budget on the backs of people who have intellectual disabilities. has maintained funding for community services. Unless we press the fight, I am fearful that cuts to community services for people with intellectual disabilities might be used to fund cuts in other areas of the budget. When you're here today, contact your legislators and demand that they do not cut these programs that have helped so many of our family members who have intellectual disabilities. Instead, demand that we cut waste fraud, abuse, and inefficiency in other areas. Successful programs that have helped so many people with intellectual disabilities and have proven to be so successful should not be on the chopping block. I want to know, I want to know how this Commonwealth can, over the years, fund jazz concerts in Philadelphia build a new soccer stadium in Chester, provide free postage for prison inmates, and provide tax credits to Hollywood filmmakers, yet have the nerve to tell parents who are into their 80s and care for an adult child with an intellectual disability, you're going to have to wait for services. Well, I say they've waited long enough. By engaging in this fight, we are showing those with intellectual disabilities that no one is truly disabled unless they surrender to the challenge that has been laid before them. This is one battle where surrender is not an option. Thank you and God bless you. Pachinski is a representative from Luzerne County and before entering into public service was known as a popular musician, a dedicated teacher, whether speaking on behalf of his fellow teachers or working for the United Way as a volunteer for 30 years or a board member for 10 years, and he was known for interest in health and human services always. Most recently in his work as a legislature, uh, as a legislator, he has advanced initiatives that would provide affordable quality health care to working Pennsylvania families. He spearheaded legislation that expanded access to routine dental services for school children and senior citizens in nursing homes. He's a champion of initiatives that would provide affordable quality health care to Pennsylvania families. He's working on those issues before the aging uh, and older adult services, the insurance uh, committee, the health and human services committee. He's a, he's a chairman subcommittee chairman on drug and alcohol with the Health and Human Services Committee. He's our friend, he's our ally, Eddie Paczynski. Thank you, Peter. Thank you very much. Thank you, and welcome to uh, the most beautiful capital in the entire United States of America. And thank you for exercising your right in this great country to assemble. Thank you for coming together and sharing the success 
of such an incredible venture. You know, I'm old enough to remember when folks with disabilities did not come out into the public, did not come to schools, did not come to the Capitol. This is and has been an exercise of proven worth and value. A great deal of money, effort, and time has been invested in these people, in all of us, to prove the fact that no matter what your disability, you can improve your quality of life and you can become a productive citizen. Your presence here today has demonstrated the success of that program. And many, many, many years ago, people were just as wise as they are hopefully today when they used the phrase, penny wise and pound foolish. Penny wise and pound foolish. We have just invested millions and millions of dollars in proving that people with intellectual disabilities can be successful, can be productive, and yet, because of the financial collapse of 2008, by the way, you did nothing to cause that. That was caused by those big guys up in New York, the Wall Street guys. We won't mention them by name. We now have to struggle, we have to come together and find ways to make sure that we do not destroy all the good work that has been done. This, you, are the good work that has been done. And when we think about our budget at $27.3 billion, and you need a little less than $40 million, ladies and gentlemen, that is pennies. Ladies and gentlemen, that is pennies. Now, I do agree we do have a budget deficit, but I don't agree on how we're going to solve that deficit. I, too, agree with Representative Burke and Senator Dinneman. I am not willing to balance the budget on people with disabilities or hardworking people throughout the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. You know, there are pockets of money that are out there. Do you know what they are? If you've read the papers, I'm sure you know. There's a thing called Marcella Shale. That's worth $250 million. That's worth $250 million. You only need 40. There's a thing out there called the Delaware Loophole. Do you know what that is? Corporations pay no taxes to Pennsylvania even though they're here in this great state, even though they sell and they make money in this great state, but $600 million is going into their coffers all you need is 40 million. What about the Amazon loophole? What's the difference between buying through a catalog or buying through the internet? No difference. When you buy through a catalog, you pay your fair share of taxes. What do those taxes pay for, ladies and gentlemen? Those taxes pay for these programs that have helped your people become successful. That's why there is pockets of money out there, and those monies should go to help people that have proven that they are productive. Penny wise and pound foolish, $223,000 to put person in an institution, as opposed to half of that to remain at home. All the money spent in our schools to make sure that our children were prepared so that when they become 18, 19, 20, 21 years old, they can then go into a job and have a full independent life and pay their fair share and be productive. That's what I stand for. That's what you stand for. There is no reason to go back. This is 2011. There is finances that are available out there. You only need $40 million of that. You are a proven success story. I stand with you. We are not going back. Thank you.